Okay, now we'll talk a little bit about what is the real plyometrics. And I say real because uh, I want to go back to what Yuri Verashansky uh, developed or created in the former Soviet Union. This was the beginning of what we now know as plyometrics. But as I alluded to in, other, in the other podcasts, uh, what we call plyometrics today is really simply jump exercises everybody comes up with. In fact, the other day I read an article. It was called Plyometrics for the Upper Body. And they were just doing some slow push-ups. Or stepping from a step and going up and down. But nothing that even resembled any kind of a jump. So everything is being called plyometrics. So because of that, we have to separate. What is the real plyometrics? What did Verashansky create initially that we are not doing for the most part today? And I think this is what I call the true explosive plyometrics. Now let's take a look at the difference between the two. In explosive plyometrics, or what Dr. Verashansky created, uh, he looked at what happens to the body in our various sports. For example, a runner. When his foot's uh, coming in contact with the ground, as soon as it hits the ground, there's a major impact. The foot hits the ground. It's a hit. There's a lot of shock to it. And that's where he came up with these terms, the hit method or the shock method. Because the body undergoes a shock. When you're jumping off something, you're up on a height, let's say six feet high, and you, you jump down. As soon as you hit the ground, that's a major shock to the body. So he looked at this and said, okay, now this is what happens in sports. We first have this shock, and then we have a rebound, quote unquote, I'm using it loosely here, a rebound movement. So for example, going back to running again, after the foot hits the ground, it, it comes off. So that motion of hitting the ground and then coming off in the shortest amount of time is the key to the true plyometrics. And if we use the example of the runner, the sprinter, his foot is in contact with the ground all of one-tenth or less seconds. One-tenth of a second or less. I mean, you just about blink your eye and that's it. That's how fast it is. But there's a major force when that foot hits the ground. And there's a major force when the foot leaves the ground. So this is the key to the plyometrics. When he saw this, he said, how can I duplicate this in training? This is what happens in sports. How can we then duplicate it? Or come close to duplicating it? So the plyometrics was developed really as a specialized exercise to prepare the athlete for explosive movements. But it has to involve this quick force or shock to the body. Because as soon as the body receives this shock, it, in, it undergoes an involuntary contraction. You don't even have to think about it. It's going to happen. The muscles and tendons automatically go into contraction to stop you from collapsing on the ground. They withstand these forces on the landing. And as they withstand these forces, the energy that's involved is stored in a ligament and, and tendon. I'm not the ligament, the, the tendons and muscle. A little bit in a ligament too. Uh, and then the stored energy is given back in the push-off or then return movement. Now all of this happens very, very quickly. So that's why even though the sprinter uh, executes the movement in less than one-tenth of a second, you know, the ground contact and takeoff. We can't, as in our training, duplicate this. It happens too fast. See, in all of our sports, the actions, uh, the things that happen in execution of the sport, very often cannot be duplicated by the body in training. But we try and come as close as possible to duplicating whatever it is. So, therefore, this plyometrics came about where we could come, we can uh, execute these movements in about 15 hundredths to two, two, two tenths of a second. So it's a little bit slower, but not that much. 
And this type of training still relates to improving the push off, let's say in running or in some other activity. And it doesn't have to be in running or only with the legs. The same thing can happen with the arm. Uh, let's say a football player, if he wants to hit someone real hard, or if someone hits him and he has his arms out, the arms given, he wants to repel, see now he's undergoing that eccentric contraction, then he can m- immediately push back. So it's the, the give, you get that initial impact, then there's some give to it, and during the giving action, you're developing this tension, and then you give it back in the push-off. But the more tension you can develop, the more powerful will be the push-off. That's the key. So we want that development of tension. And this is why when I read many sources, they talk about absorbing the forces on landing. You don't want to absorb them. Absorb means the forces are now gone, they're liquidated. Now if you want to jump down and have a nice safe landing with no, no injury, then you want to absorb the forces. Let's say if you were jumping down from a high height and you weren't going to bounce up again and you knew, hey, this is really too high, then you want to go all the way down and go into a roll. Now we're dissipating all of the energy. See, we need that distance over which to dissipate it. But in plyometrics or the true explosive plyometrics, we don't want this dissipation of forces. We want accumulation of forces. And then we want to give back the forces in the push-off. So you could do it with the arms, you could do it with the trunk, you could do it for the midsection. Medicine ball training. This is where I use medicine balls quite a bit for the explosive midsection training. It's very hard to get explosive movements out of the midsection without, with other equipment. So let's say a medicine ball, when it's thrown to you, you catch it, and in a catch, you don't want to go all the way back, because then you're absorbing all of the energy. So you want to catch it, and stop the movement as soon as you can. And as soon as you stop the movement, return it as quickly and as forcefully as possible. If you're doing this on a high level, let's say, for example, with the medicine ball, that ball's gotta be flying back and forth. And the heavier the ball, the greater will be the force that you can generate, or the explosive power. But that ball's gotta be moving fast. If you throw it slowly, you're not gonna generate that force. Why? Because it takes too long in the transition. See, it's a transition, let's say for a jump, from the jump down to the takeoff. The transition from the impact to the release of that energy. That's got to be very fast. So the same thing, the throwing action. You want to receive and repel as quickly as possible. That's the key. And this, this is now true plyometrics. This is what was intended by Dr. Yuri Verhozhansky. And this is what I have really expounded on in my book, Explosive Plyometrics. So you'll see many great exercises and how they should be done. And I've actually gone beyond this to show how some of these exercises can be duplicated with rubber tubing. It's kind of a new concept. Uh, as well as exercises for the upper body and lower body uh, and midsection. So you can develop uh, explosive power in just about any part of the body. So depending upon your sport, uh, and sometimes the sport requires explosive power in more than one place. So then you can do a combination of exercises. And this will really make a tremendous difference. But don't confuse this explosive type plyometrics that I'm describing with what everybody else calls plyometrics today. Simple little jumping, hopping and skipping and whatnot. This is not plyometrics. But the word is already here. So I'm not going to fight it and say, hey, that's not plyometrics. It's accepted. This is plyometrics. Now let's separate it. In true explosive plyometrics, this is really the shock or impact method. So let's keep that, you know, keep those two in mind. When you hear the term true or explosive plyometrics, you're now dealing with uh, the impact or the shock method. The true method developed by Dr. Verhoshansky. See, and this is why he doesn't want to be known as the father of plyometrics, because he didn't espouse or uh, promote just any little old jump or whatever as plyometrics. It had to be the impact or hit method. This is true plyometrics.